In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a power supply, or PSU, into a PC. The power supply I'm gonna be working with in this video is the Be Quiet Straight Power 12. It's an 850 watt, fully modular PSU. The first thing I wanna do is get everything out of the box and laid out on my table so that I can see what I'm working with. If this is your first time unboxing a PSU, it's pretty easy to get a little intimidated. You open the box and you see all these different cables and connectors and you're like, uh, what does all this stuff do? But don't you worry, because it is actually pretty simple and I'm gonna go over what every single cable does. Whether you've installed a power supply before or not, this cable is the simplest and most self-explanatory by far. You've got one end that plugs into the back of the power supply unit itself and then the other end that goes over to your wall to supply the main power feed. This is your main motherboard power cable. It has 24 pins in a 20 plus four pin configuration. And this is to ensure compatibility with motherboards that use the older 20 pin design. Now, unless you're installing your PSU into a very old system, you're gonna be using all 24 pins on this cable. And this is what the other end looks like that's gonna plug into the PSU. This is a CPU power cable. It's split into four two pin connectors because CPU power connections can be either four or eight pins. Some motherboards may have a combination of both, one 4-pin and one 8-pin, and high-performance boards can have two 8-pin connections, and some actually have three, but it's rare. And here's another CPU power cable, but this one's a rigid 8-pin design, so it can't be split. This is a PCIe or VGA cable, and these are what power your graphics card. They're usually split into a 6 plus 2-pin configuration for 8 pins total, and it's common to see two banks of connections on one cable like you can see here. Graphics cards have a variety of different power configurations, ranging from a single 6-pin connection all the way up to triple 8-pin setups. Some people get these confused with the CPU power cables, but it's important to know that they're completely different and can't be used interchangeably. This is a 12-volt high-power cable for graphics cards. If you have an older power supply from before the ATX 3.0 standard was introduced, you might not have this one. It's designed to deliver a huge amount of power to the highest-end graphics cards on the market. Next up, we have SATA cables. These are used to power your hard drives and SSDs and other accessories like AIOs and fan controllers. They have a really unique connector. It's this L shape that you can see here and it makes it so you can't really mess it up. It only plugs in one way. And finally, we have Molex cables. These used to be the main power connection for hard drives and optical drives, but everything's moved over to SATA now. These days, Molex is just typically used for accessories like controllers and fans, but it's not very common. Now it's time to plug everything into the PSU. The order you plug these in doesn't matter. I'm gonna start with the 24 pin motherboard cable. On the PSU side, there's two slots that we need to plug into. Make sure your connections are nice and tight and pushed in all the way. Next, I'm gonna plug in my CPU power cables. I'm plugging in two of these because my motherboard requires an eight pin and a four pin connection. This next one's the SATA power cable and I'm just installing one because that's gonna give me more than enough SATA connections for my system. If you have a monster graphics card that requires the 12 volt high power cable, you would plug that in right here. I'm not gonna be using it in my system, but I'm plugging it in anyway, just for demonstration purposes. And finally, to finish this off, I just need to plug in one PCIe cable to power my graphics card. And now we're ready to install the PSU into our case. I'm gonna be installing into this open air frame test bench just because it's easier for me to show you all the connections in detail. It's just less restricted than working inside of a box type case. But before I jump into that stuff, I'll show you how to install the PSU into a standard case that's more likely to match up with what you're gonna be working with. So we're gonna to need to remove both side panels, and if your case has a shroud or cover at the bottom, it helps to remove that too. It just opens everything up nice and big and gives you lots of room to work. This is where we're gonna install the PSU. This case has a removable bracket that attaches to the PSU and makes it really easy to mount. If your case doesn't have one of these, then your PSU is just gonna mount directly to the back of the case. Power supplies have four mounting points. All I need to do is line up the bracket with the screw holes on the back of the PSU and screw each one down nice and tight. Now pull all the cables through the opening and make sure the fans facing the bottom of the case for airflow and insert the power supply all the way in up to the mounting bracket. Tighten down the four thumb screws and that's it. Now switching back over to the other case and again don't get confused this is just because it's easier for me to film what I'm doing and to give you a better view of what's going on. The first thing I'm gonna do is get all the cables pulled through to the back side of the case through these rubber grommets. The first connection I wanna make is the main motherboard power, and that's this one right here. It's usually on the upper half of the board towards the right hand side. And I can see right here next to the connector, I've got a pass through point for the cable. I'm gonna come around back and find my 24 pin ATX motherboard cable, and that's this big guy right here. And I'm gonna route it up to the pass through that I showed you on the front and pull the cable through. Now I just need to make sure the little four pin piece is clipped onto the big 20 pin section and plug it into the connector, making sure it's all the way in without any gaps. 
Now we're gonna connect our CPU power. The connectors are usually on the top left section of the board like I have right here. This board has one eight pin and one four pin, so that means I'm gonna need two cables. If we come here behind the case, we can find our two CPU power cables. Just like before, we're gonna pay attention to where we need to route these and get them to where they need to go on the front side of the case. All right, let's get the eight pin installed first. You can see it's got a little notch that lines up with the clip on the cable, just like the 24 pin. We'll get this plugged in, and now we can plug in the smaller four pin cable, just like that. And this one has a split connector that I don't need, so I'm just gonna tuck it out of the way here. For this next part, I need to get my graphics card installed so that I can plug in my PCIe or VGA cables. Again, this is not a typical case, and I'm gonna be mounting the graphics card vertically with this riser cable. This card requires both six and eight pin power. I wanna try and hide these cables as much as possible, so I'm bringing them in from the bottom behind the graphics card. For the six pin, there's gonna be two extra pins that hang off the side there. Just like with the CPU cables, we'll push those out of the way because we don't need them. And for the other one, we'll clip the two pins onto the six to make eight and plug it into the connector. Now I mentioned before that I'm not gonna be using the 12 volt high power connector in this system, but if you are gonna use it, I always recommend with that one, just check your manufacturer's manual that came with your power supply because there's certain ways to connect those cables. For example, you're not supposed to bend them too close to the connection and stuff like that. So to be safe, just double check your manual with that cable. If you're gonna install any controllers or hard drives or SSDs in your system, then you're gonna to need to connect some SATA power. This controller hub that I'm installing is meant to control fan speed and lighting, and it requires a single SATA connection. So we take our last cable here, and you can see these connectors have a little notch, so they can only go in one way. We just gotta push the two ends together and make the connection. If you have a hard drive or SSD, it's the same connection, plugs in the exact same way. Now put your side panels back on, plug in the main power cable, make sure the power switch is set to the on position, and fire up the PC. That's it, you're good to go. If you need help with anything else PC building related, check out my PC building video playlist, I'll link it for you down in the description. Get subscribed and we'll see you soon.